Hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to talk briefly about acceleration. And um, I've written up there our first equation of motion, which does not uh, directly involve acceleration, and that's average velocity is position over time. And as a quick reminder, the units for that are usually going to be meters per second. Now, again, it could be anything. It could be miles per hour, kilometers per hour, whatever, inches per year. Um, but we're going we're gonna to usually use meters per second for that. Now, um, I, I'm going to start for acceleration. Uh, I'm going to start with a definition of acceleration. So this will be like our second equation of motion, okay? And acceleration, and there's a bar over that as well because it is also an average. And that is actually very important that you understand that and that you write that down. And that is change in velocity over time, okay? So notice how it looks similar to the first equation, okay? Now, there are other versions to this that you might be aware of. Now, first of all, delta. What does that mean? Okay. If you were to write this equation like this, and I'll, I'll write it briefly, okay, this is not an equation. This has no meaning. Okay. Um, you're missing the delta. Delta means change. So it means final minus initial. And it's always, no matter what thing you're looking at, it's always the final value minus the initial value. So if I asked you for your delta height from fifth grade to now. You would take your height now, that's your final height, uh, minus your height in fifth grade, and that would be your change in height, your delta height. Okay. So in this case, we got a delta V. If your velocity is changing, then you have acceleration, and this will give us our average acceleration. Uh, units for this, velocity is usually in meters per second, and then we're dividing that by time. So this is meters per second per second. Some people write this meters per second squared. Um, I personally don't do that, though. I usually will write meters per second per second. And that's, what that's telling you is how quickly uh, the object's velocity is changing. How many meters per second is it changing each second? Okay. Now, other versions of this equation that you may have used in a pre, uh, previous class and that we'll use in here as well is if I, I could solve for delta V, which is A times T. Um, delta V is V final minus V initial. So if I solve that for V final, you get V, uh, V naught plus A T. Okay. Those are all, again, the same equation. They just, um, are slightly different variances of them, but it's the same equation, uh, finding the same thing. Okay. Now, um, for a minute, we're going to talk very carefully about positive and negative acceleration. Okay. So, um, I want you to imagine that you're in a car at a stoplight and you are stopped and the light turns green and you hit the gas and you accelerate from zero meters per second to 10 meters per second. And for this, um, for, the, for all these situations, we're going to assume that forward is positive or let's just, for the sake of argument, we'll say your car's facing east and we'll call that positive and you start from rest and you accelerate toward the east. Okay. So um, we're gonna make a little chart here. Your initial velocity was zero and your final velocity was 10. Okay. So, uh, what's your acceleration? Okay. Now I didn't give you a time, so I'm not look looking for a number here. I'm just looking for a positive or negative. Well, if I do final minus initial velocity, it's 10 minus zero and you get a positive 10 and then divided by whatever time we have. So it'd be a positive acceleration. And everybody knows that answer. If I asked you if your acceleration in that case is positive or negative, I would bet that everybody in this class would say that's positive. Now, let's say you're, you're traveling at that 10 meters per second, and then you hit the brakes, okay? So you were doing 10 meters per second, and then you slow down to zero meters per second. Is that positive or negative acceleration? Well, that's negative, okay? And um, again, I would imagine that if I asked you that, almost everybody would get that right. If I asked you if that was positive or negative acceleration, okay? Here's where it gets a little tricky. Now, let's say you put the car in reverse and hit the gas. Is that positive or negative acceleration? Okay. Um, this is where we get divergence on answers. <laughs> so um, let me start with acceleration. Positive acceleration does not mean speeding up. And negative acceleration does not mean slowing down. Positive and negative do not mean speeding up or slowing down. Positive and negative mean what's happening to your velocity. Is it becoming more positive or more negative? Okay. So in the case of being in reverse and hitting the gas, you're starting off with a zero velocity and you're ending with a negative 10, let's say. So if I do final minus initial, that's negative 10 minus zero, you get a negative value. 
So in that case, you have a negative acceleration. Okay. Now, uh, something else to note, your body is a really good accelerometer. Okay, let's go back to, we'll call this situation A, the very first one. When you hit the gas in that car, you feel like you get thrown backward. Now, we'll talk about that in subsequent units. You don't get thrown backward, but it, it feels like you get thrown backward. That's positive acceleration. You feel like you get thrown backward, that's positive. Uh, for situation B, if you're moving and hit the brakes, let's say hard, just to you know, make sure so you can kind of feel it, then you feel like you get thrown forward. Now, again, same thing. You don't actually get thrown forward, but that's what it feels like to you. So that feeling of getting thrown forward, that's negative acceleration. Well, how about situation C here? Okay, now, uh, if you were to try this, do it somewhere safe, okay? But if you are in, in uh, if you are stopped and you put your car in reverse and floor it, your body's gonna feel like it gets thrown forward, okay? So that's the same as situation B. It's gonna be the exact same feeling. So that's why situations B and C are both negative acceleration, okay? And in situation D, let's say you're now traveling backward and you hit the brakes. So you were moving backward at, let's say, negative 10 meters per second, and now you're going zero. Is that positive or negative acceleration? Well, it's positive. Now, again, the math of it is you're taking zero minus negative 10, which is a positive number. Your, your velocity got more positive. It increased by positive 10, okay? But the other way to look at that is what, what would you feel like? Well, if you were moving backward and hit the brakes, your body would feel like it gets thrown back. And that's like situation A. When you get thrown back, that's a positive acceleration, okay? Now, something else to note on these. What about speeding up and slowing down? Where does that fit in here, okay? Well, if your velocity and your acceleration are the same sign, you are speeding up. So notice in the first example, our velocity was positive the whole time, or zero, and your acceleration is positive, so you're speeding up. The other time when you're speeding up is situation C. You're in reverse and hitting the gas. You're also speeding up, okay? And um, that's because your, both your velocity and your acceleration are both negative, okay? So whenever your velocity and acceleration are the same sign, you're speeding up. And conversely, in situations B and D, you're slowing down, okay? Now, um, in addition to that equation, uh, you would have previously learned several other ones. The third one, okay, is another definition for average velocity. And that's very simple. It's V naught plus V final over two. It's the average velocity of your starting and final velocity. So for instance, if I said you were moving at 10 meters per second and you sped up to 30 meters per second, your average is 20, okay? Um, you know, 10 plus 30 over 2 is 20, okay? Now, there's a big if here, okay? And notice I'm writing this big. This is actually very, very important. It's only, uh, this equation is only true if you have a constant acceleration, okay? So if you accelerated from 10 to 30 meters per second at a constant acceleration rate, then um, this equation is true. Let me give an example of when this equation is not true, just so you have a converse, okay? This equation is not true uh, if, for instance, let's say I'm driving from Chicago to St. Louis. So I don't know, about 200 miles trip. And let's say for the first uh, two and a half hours, I'm driving at 80 miles per hour. Shh, don't tell mom and dad, right? We're speeding a little bit, that's okay. So let's say we're doing 80 miles per hour the whole entire trip. And then for like the last 10 minutes, I slow down to 40 miles an hour. So I was doing 80 miles per hour for almost the entire trip. And then for a few minutes, I was doing 40 miles per hour. If I just do an average there, 40 and 80, the average is 60. There is no way my average velocity is 60 miles per hour. It's way closer to 80. It's probably like 79 or something like that. That's because in that situation, I did not have a constant acceleration. I had two different speeds and a very brief deceleration in between, okay? So this equation, very important, but it's only true if you have constant acceleration. Now, uh, that leads to two other equations. If you just simply do algebra, and you can look this up online or in a textbook, but if you, you can use these three equations to derive two others. So I will, I will um, write those other ones down. It's just a little bit of algebra to get them. One of them looks like this. 
delta x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. Okay. Now, because that's algebraically derived from equation three, and I'll call this equation four, okay, because that's derived from equation three, this also is predicated on constant acceleration. This equation is only valid if your acceleration is constant. Now, by the way, your acceleration can be zero, that's constant, in which case you just have delta x equals vt, which is basically equation one again, okay? Um, but again, and I keep emphasizing this because it's so important, this equation is only true if you have constant acceleration, okay? Um, now, other versions of this you may have written, like last year, you may have written it this way. You might have separated the delta x, okay? And, and that, oh, sorry, this should be a plus. And that's fine. Um, it doesn't really matter. It's the same equation, okay? Uh, a fifth equation that you folks probably worked with looks like this. V final squared equals V naught squared plus 2A times delta X, okay? And the same thing goes for that. That is algebraically derived from the first three equations. Um, if you look in your textbook, they derive both these equations for you. But because they're both reliant on equation three, these are only true if you have constant acceleration, okay? Um, and in the first few problems, we're going to talk about constant acceleration. Now, by the way, in, a, in a, another discussion or two, we're going to veer away from constant acceleration. And in that case, equations three, four, and five will no longer be valid. You won't be able to use them. Um, equations one and two, always valid. Equations three, four, and five, only if, okay? Uh, so I look forward to the uh, example that I'll do with constant acceleration, and then eventually we'll talk about non-constant acceleration. I uh, hope that was helpful. Thank you very much.